and welcome to Skincare with Lenka. Today I would like to talk about psoriasis and basic skincare uh, for psoriasis. Uh, so if you've been watching my channel or me, you know that uh, I have been diagnosed with psoriasis uh, when I was 11 years old and I made a two-part video about psoriasis before, so if you want to go check it out. Uh, to understand for psoriasis there is no cure, there is only managing your sy symptoms. Um, and of course you have your uh, light therapy and you have uh, topical steroids, uh, oral steroids and biologicals, but what I want to talk today is the basic uh, uh, skincare for psoriasis and ingredients or uh, topical uh, ointments you can get over the counter, you don't need uh, a dermatologist uh, uh, to prescribe you. Quick disclaimer before we start. I am not a dermatologist and this video is made for educational and entertainment purposes only. In this video I just want to simply share uh, techniques and ingredients which w was working for my skin and are generally recommended by dermatologists. I am a member of uh, Facebook uh, support groups for psoriasis and what I can see uh, over and over is um, um, similar complaints or um, sometimes not understanding uh, what ingredients are prescribed for what or what they should be using and it's just uh, a little bit confusion uh, on social media so I thought um, maybe this video will help clear uh, something uh, so for example like the most complain and uh, I complain myself about the same thing um, that dermatologist that I will just try and try different creams and different things uh, without big success and you just have a feeling like you're a lab rat you know like just putting whatever on you well let me just explain uh, why is is it that way or why this is happening I done a basic dermatology course uh, uh, and only then I understood why uh, the process is as it is. Well, basically, psoriasis is inflammatory um, disease, right? So it can infect your skin. So the most manifestations is in your skin. It can affect your joints. It can uh, affect the digestive system. It can affect many uh, different systems in your body. Um, and much like other inflammatory diseases, they, uh, the skin manifestation, they look exactly the same. Uh, well, not exactly, they, they look really, really similar. So the uh, seborrheic, seborrheic dermatitis or atopical dermatitis, eczema and psoriasis, they look really, really similar. Uh, so unless you do biopsy, uh, which also can be inconclusive, um, uh, you really cannot tell if it's psoriasis or eczema or dead or dead. The way how the dermatologist will proceed is to try different medication and see uh, what works, like elimination uh, system. Maybe they will try antifungal uh, uh, shampoo like a Nizoral. Uh, for if you have a scalp psoriasis because they want to find out if you have seborrheic dermatitis or psoriasis so oftentimes for psoriasis the antifungal cream won't do, uh, or shampoo won't do anything so that gives the uh, you know idea for dermatologists like okay so it's probably seborrheic dermatitis uh, also another clue is that the flakes in seborrheic dermatitis are more oily uh, so the problem the, uh, the, ro the, um, uh, the root cause for psoriasis and seborrheic dermatitis they different. One it's uh, caused by overgrowth of uh, melastasia yeast and another one is inflammatory disease. Um, but again they look very very similar so your dermatologist will just try a few things and see how it goes. The complaint number two is um, that cream doesn't work or that emollient cream doesn't do anything for me. So the biggest problem is um, that people with psoriasis or eczema, um, they will only treat their skin when they have flare-up. 
and that's a big mistake you need to take care of your skin uh, even it looks really good then you don't have flare up you don't have dry skin you keep you need to keep going um, with a strong routine and then will help maintain uh, uh, the the normal not normal better skin um, skin barrier function so to explain uh, in people with psoriasis or eczema or other uh, inflammatory diseases our skin barrier doesn't work properly like for other people so we need to really take care of our skin uh, constantly and constantly I mean daily is not when I have flare-up it's every single day so let's talk about uh, moisturizers so basic moisturizer, um, the reason why we use it is to prevent transepidermal water loss. This is just fancy word for uh, water evaporating from your skin. As I mentioned before, our skin barrier doesn't function properly and we're losing water in a greater speed, uh, much, much faster than normal skin. So we suffer with dry skin, uh, crack open skin very often because of that reason. So we need to uh, use moisturizers constantly every single day. So if you have a flare-up, go ahead and put a moisturizer at least four times per day if it's really bad, even more. If it's uh, uh, your skin look uh, fabulous and good and you have teeny tiny spot here and there, use moisturizer twice a day, in the morning and in the evening after shower. The way how we apply a moisturizer is on the damp skin. Uh, so for example, right after shower, you, uh, uh, you just gently tap the water away and apply moisturizer straight away from head to toes. Uh, this will lock the moisture in and prevent the transepidermal water loss. Uh, second tip uh, about taking bath or shower, you must uh, keep your shower short and no hot water, the same for the bath because um, uh, strangely, or I don't know if you know, but I didn't know, water is very drying, especially hot water is super drying for skin. Uh, so you need to avoid it and as I said, apply moisturizer right after the, uh, the bath or um, shower. The same thing is when uh, you are swimming in a swimming pool, you should, uh, after you finish swimming, uh, take a, a shower to rinse uh, the chlorinated water of your skin and reapply uh, a sunscreen. So sunscreen in this instant will work as a moisturizer, so you don't have to you know, carry the moisturizer with you when you go for swim. Um, so this is very important, like the, the number one goal is to prevent water evaporation and second to avoid irritation uh, to avoid irritation is uh, especially so we don't use uh, skincare with fragrance essential oils uh, very abrasive um, uh, body scrubs um, about the moisturizer so you have lots of different kind of moisturizers uh, uh, and the ingredients I'm looking in moisturizer is here colloidal oatmeal, ceramides, uh, coal tar. So it can be also medicated moisturizer, it doesn't have to be basic one. Uh, so I have here, uh, this is um, a colloidal oatmeal daily moisturizer lotion. This is fragrance free. Uh, I got it from this camp, so I'm in South Africa. Uh, so the main uh, like a drugstore is this chem or clicks so this is their store brand it is really good uh, you can use it for face and body uh, the one cream I finished uh, is uh, for example CeraVe this is very basic moisturizer again fragrance free uh, with contain uh, hyaluronic acid and ceramides um, and this is the cream I'm using currently. This is a moisturizer with um, coal tar uh, and it's marketed for psoriasis and eczema obviously. It smells horrible. Uh, it smells horrible uh, but it doesn't the smell doesn't linger too much uh, and goes away after a while. So I find using coal tar, uh, coal tar uh, regularly is very helping for my skin because coal tar is anti-inflammatory. So it will uh, calm down that inflammation. 
and I use this one daily so it's, it's really you don't have to wait until your skin is bad uh, I have another one if I have bigger flare-up so this is um, an ointment uh, with coal tar again a small small square bed but it's much thicker and you can um, go uh, one day to use you know uh, the one just with colloidal oatmeal and another day used with coal tar or there, there are moisturizers uh, as well with um, salicylic acid or um, um, glycolic acid which will help exfoliate and moisturize at the same time um, for me I exfoliate um, uh, with chemical exfoliant again that's salicylic acid and glycolic acid and for my case I'm using uh, just this is face wash uh, with salicylic acid so I will lather that uh, on my legs and arms wait for a little bit and wash it out or I use uh, glycolic acid um, I put just in a cotton bud um, wipe it, uh, let it dry, put moisturizer over it so you can use this technique uh, for help to exfoliate um, or you can again get a moisturizer with exfoliant uh, with, with salicylic or glycolic acid in it already it's very important to moisturize then it's very important uh, to exfoliate but exfoliate gently if you use scrubs uh, apricot scrub or something you create micro injury which you're driving the inflammation which this is the one we, we try to avoid right remember goal number one avoid um, drying your skin and goal number two is to avoid irritation. So uh, gentle exfoliation is way to go. Let's go to um, scalp psoriasis. Um, the best way to control the scalp psoriasis, and I used to have a um, uh, full head. I had a um, uh, you know, map on my forehead and, and full, full head on um, scalp, uh, scalp psoriasis. And the best way is to deal with it uh, for a relief. I would soak my head uh, in colloidal oatmeal bath, or I would uh, soak my head and my body, obviously, in um, uh, bath salt from the Dead Sea. They contain um, uh, minerals which are very soothing and moisturizing. So I would soak my head uh, in the water. Uh, to uh, to soothe and I would use salicylic acid and coal tar shampoo either separate uh, if you have separate then it's best to use it uh, salicylic acid uh, shampoo at least three times a week uh, to help uh, remove that build up because salicylic acid is exfoliating skin uh, and at least once a week to use coal tar shampoo which is uh, soothing and uh, anti-inflammatory, so calm down the inflammation. I have a combination of both. You have a trouble to you know, keep washing your hair with medicated shampoo. In that case, I would recommend to get uh, just a really, really gem gentle shampoo. This is, again, I think I got it from this cam here. Uh, but this is a shampoo uh, which is uh, fragrance-free, color-free, uh, and contains urea so urea is again um, very soothing and moisturizing also helps a little bit exfoliate so this is a super gentle shampoo and uh, I would uh, suggest one day use medicated shampoo another day uh, maybe just a, a very uh, gentle one and, and use your um, hair mask and a conditioner uh, it's fine um, I know it's very hard to find uh, conditioner without fragrance. It's all right because you, in this case, you washing out the fragrance. It doesn't stay on your skin, uh, so it, it's fine. So really, with scalp psoriasis, uh, it's important to um, wash your hand, uh, head uh, uh, often, so you keep removing that buildup. And once you use uh, topical steroids. Uh, or other medication, it, it allows to penetrate um, the skin deep because if you have buildup and you're putting topical steroids, it doesn't get uh, deep and it, it doesn't do it, it work. Uh, 
if you don't tolerate the shampooing that often at least try three times a week and you can use uh, mineral oil uh, uh, and coconut oil for scalp mask so you just put oil on, on your scalp let it sit for uh, one hour and then uh, uh, wash it uh, with a gentle shampoo and definitely you should invest in humidifier for your home or for your office or even if you're student just put next to you or carry a, one, a little one with you. The optimal humidity for skin is 60%, uh, but not less than 30%. So during the summer we have higher air humidity and during the winter the air humidity uh, lowers down, which also is um, uh, speeding up the drying uh, of our skin, the transepidermal water loss. So basically, if you have a humidifier uh, for your home, you increase the humidity and that should definitely help your uh, skin ma maintain moisture in. It is very important to, uh, to uh, resist picking and scratching. And I know it's impossible to do because I am, I am a picker. I, uh, I, f I see the little uh, flaky thing and I want to get it off and it's really hard, I know, but uh, that can really worsen your condition. Um, it seems for me it's not a big deal when I'm picking, it doesn't spread my psoriasis or anything like that, but for some other people it can be a really big trigger. So when you're picking and scratching um, the scalp uh, or, or parts of your body, it can, it can really worsen the condition. So just be mindful and, and try, try, to, try to stop it. And again, Moisturizer, uh, instead of scratching, maybe put moisturizer on uh, to just you know, keep the mind of it. Uh, let's sum up some ingredients uh, you can look for and which they can help your skin to feel better. Colloidal oatmeal is very soothing, it is antioxidant and it has anti-inflammatory properties. Salicylic acid or BHA, exfoliating and anti-inflammatory. Sulfur is exfoliating, antifungal and antibacterial. Zinc pyrethium, anti-dendruff. Coal tar is anti-inflammatory and normalizes the skin turnover. Topical vitamin D, salt from the Dead Sea and thermal water. The minerals in the, uh, wa uh, in the salt or thermal water uh, are very soothing, moisturizing and antibacterial. Vitamin A or retinoic acid normalizes the skin behavior. Urea, exfoliating and moisturizing. Hyaluronic acid, hydrating. Ceramides helps keep our skin barrier healthy. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy my video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I really appreciate if you do. Ciao, see you next time.